On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to show you how to make your car cool in more ways than one. On this episode, we're going to talk about radiators. Now, what a radiator does is it cools the water that cools the engine. How this works is the water pump pumps water into the radiator. The water flows through these uh, core. The outside air and a cooling fan will blow through this and cool the water that cools the engine. Let's start off by talking about the different types of radiators. Now, this example we have here from Scylla, this is a plastic aluminum radiator. What it has is plastic tanks and an aluminum core. How this works is the aluminum tank on the top has a little crimp connector and you put the, the uh, top tank on there and crimp it down. These are very inexpensive. Usually they're one or two cores. They do a fine job for cooling a factory vehicle, but when you start adding horsepower, this isn't going to get it done. Okay, the next type we're going to talk about is a copper brass radiator. Now, these are old school. So old that this was the original radiators that we came out with when cars first had radiators from the time we started with horseless carriages. Now, the copper brass did a good job. Uh, of course, vehicles weren't making a lot of horsepower, but they did run them all the way up through the 60s and 70s. They're a good, um, a good way to uh, cool the car at the time, but by today's standards, lack quite a bit. The, one of the big issues that you have with the copper brass is because you're using two different types of metals, they typically corrode. Now, they're easy to repair, but they'll corrode at those seams, and they'll start to leak. Okay, this last example is an all aluminum radiator. Now this particular one is from Champion Cooling and we're going to be installing this in our Project Integra here in just a couple of minutes. This one is a three core radiator. It's going to help cool the engine as soon as we get that turbocharger installed. Now the advantage that this has over the plastic aluminum, of course, all welded seams, no crimps and no epoxy holding anything together. When you compare this to a comparable copper brass, this will cool 25% uh, better than the copper brass. Now, this radiator comes in anything from one to four cores, just like the copper brass, but again, far more efficient. So if you're going to make a lot of real horsepower, an all aluminum radiator should be in your shopping cart. Okay, we talked about cores a minute ago. Let's explain that. Now, this particular radiator has a single core uh, in it, and what it is is it's a 5H inch tube and has these cooling fins that touch it. Now, how that works is as the hot water travels through the cooling tube, these fins actually pull the heat out as the air goes through, cools that water, and allows it to flow back into the engine. So, obviously, the more cooling tubes that you have and the more fins prints you have, the more cooling capacity you have. Now, our champion radiator that we're getting ready to install has three cooling tubes and about 16 fins per inch to actually draw that heat away. So the more fins you have and the more cooling tubes you have, the, the higher the capacity for the radiator to dissipate heat. There are a couple reasons to buy a good aftermarket aluminum radiator. One reason, of course, is it's much lighter than its copper brass counterpart. Another reason is we know that heat is power. So the more horsepower you make, the more cooling capacity you need, and an all aluminum radiator is really the only way to go. Okay, as we said, now heat is power. However, the wrong kind of heat is the enemy of your engine. You can turn big parts into little parts in a hurry if you don't keep that engine cool like you're supposed to. It's very important that your cooling system is upgraded whenever you create more horsepower. All right, guys, now we're going to drain the antifreeze out of our car. Now, if you're doing this outside, of course, we're in the shop here. We just want, we're using this to keep from making a mess and also so that we can reuse the antifreeze. But if you're doing this outside, remember that antifreeze is toxic to animals and they actually like the way it smells and they'll actually drink it and you can kill the animals around you. So make sure you drain this and clean up any spill that you may have as you're draining your antifreeze. Okay, we've already disconnected our cooling fans. We're going to take the radiator hoses loose and remove our radiator. Okay, sometimes it's easier to take the lower radiator hose, um, depending if you have drip trays or things like that, like it is on our, act, on our uh, Integra. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that hose from the top and pull that out with the radiator. Then we'll reinstall it on our new radiator and drop it into place.
Okay, now we've got our radiator uninstalled. We're gonna go ahead and mount our fan to our new Champion radiator and bolt it back into place. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt our fan and bolt it to our Champion radiator. Now we're only gonna use one fan. The reason we're only gonna use one is we know that we're gonna put a turbo kit on our Project Integra, so we need that extra space over there for room for the turbo. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt this on first, then I'm gonna put the hose on last. The reason that I do that last is that way I can make sure I have it clocked correctly so it fits right in when we're done with our install. Okay, now that we've got our fan and our hose installed, don't forget you have these little grommets that are on the bottom of the old radiator and they'll fit right in the pins. So you wanna make sure that you either put these in the frame or on the bottom of the radiator. Now these ones are gonna be a little easier, just pop them right in the frame. So we're gonna put these back inside the chassis of the car and then this will set right into place when we're ready to install. Okay, now we're ready to drop our radiator into place. Okay, now on this install, because our radiator is so much wider, this little tab is actually coming down and actually hitting the radiator. So you don't want to leave that there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and bend this tab down with a hammer. That way it fits and doesn't rub a hole in our new radiator. Okay, now that our radiator is installed, we're going to go ahead and put our hoses back in place and then refill with antifreeze. While we're on the topic of radiator hoses, don't forget that if you're buying a performance radiator, it's a great time to buy and install upgraded radiator hoses as well, which we sell here at Andy's. Okay guys, a couple of important safety tips. Make sure the engine is cold when you're doing this. Don't ever change the radiator out when it's hot. Uh, the coolant is very warm and can burn you, so you want to make sure you take care of that. Also, when after you do your install, you want to make sure you hook up your recovery line. The recovery line is very important. Uh, it allows, as the uh, water expands or antifreeze expands, it goes into the overflow tank and then when the engine cools down and when you shut it off, it actually draws it back in there, always keeping your radiator full. That's what the purpose of that is. So make sure you don't forget to put that line on. Also, some vehicles have an automatic transmission and they have transmission lines that go to either to one of the tanks of the radiator. So you want to make sure you hook those back up as well. If you're running a race car, you're not allowed to run antifreeze uh, per most sanctioning bodies. So what you do in that case, you run 100% water, distilled water is best, uh, but also you can use one of these two products here, Water Wetter from Redline or Purple Ice from Royal Purple. Help keep your engine cool and, and lubricate uh, that water pump as well. Okay, now we're going to pour our antifreeze back into our radiator. Now we recovered our antifreeze, ours was in pretty good shape so we're just going to replace it. Remember, we're putting a radiator in here with a lot more capacity so you're probably going to need some more antifreeze uh, or an antifreeze water mixture to put back into your radiator. Also, as soon as we're done refilling this, we're going to start the engine and we're going to run it up to normal operating temperature and make sure that our fans work. Anytime that you uh, mess with any electrical system, you want to make sure that works before you go back out there on the road to make sure that you don't have any problems and get stranded. All right, if you're replacing a radiator on certain vehicles, such as my Mini Cooper, now uh, our Project Mini Cooper has a bleed valve and the only way to get the air out of that is to start the engine and run it and you have to continue to run it and continue to run it until the bubbles stop coming out of the bleed valve until you get a constant flow of antifreeze through that. Some vehicles are like that. Uh, this vehicle is no problem. You just actually uh, fill the radiator with fluid. You can start the engine up and what it'll do is it'll draw uh, all the air right out of it. It'll recycle it and you'll add a little bit more antifreeze. If you make sure your recovery tank is full, you should be in good shape. Okay, now that we've increased our cooling capacity with our Champion Radiator, we can add those performance parts to our Project Integra that we've been waiting for. Popular brands we carry are Blackworks Racing, Champion, Mizu, Mijimoto, and Koyo. We hope you've learned something today, and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV.